it's the the dead air horror uh review mm-hmm. show and uh i am your co-host uh tj aka el topo and to my virtual left is mr chris parks aka big dick long daddy <laughs> maybe maybe an inappropriate nickname I, for a movie yeah and now should i edit that out <laughs> maybe <Am> I... <laughs> <laughs> no, you should just you should just go like boom. Like that's actually funnier than than the name that I came up with anyway. Um <laughs> can you come up with some kind of explicit nickname for me every show? And yes. I just, yeah. Yes. All right. I, I, can and I then come we'll up leave... with something explicit? Absolutely. I'm very we'll leave the that. listener guessing. Yeah. Uh that's so anyway, mean. we watched uh 2021. This movie is two years old somehow. So old. Uh, I thought this movie came out last year, I or possibly too. this year. Um, uh, but we watched The Innocence. Not to be confused, there's another movie called The Innocence that came out in like 2016 that's about nuns. Uh, but we watched uh, 2021's The Innocence that's about psychic kids. Uh, very, uh, Chris, you're familiar with the film Akira, right? I the am. anime? Yeah. Did you get a little bit of Akira vibes from these kids? Because I kind of did. I I had... will be the first one to tell you I never watched uh, the Akira. I never, I never, uh, I don't know. It never appealed to me. Uh, so you would definitely very... be the expert on that. Well, it's Is also. Is that what you well, were feeling? Uh, a little bit. Well, because Akira, there's a subplot that basically it's about these, the government is uh, trying to create these weapons with psychic powers and they, they test it on children. So it's very there's the, okay. there's some similar aspects to this. Also, like, I, and I put this in my letterboxed review. Like this this movie was like a dark version of Stranger Things in a weird way. <laughs> yeah. Also, I'm gonna bury the lead. Uh, I really like this movie, but it all it it um it overcame something that we all know that TJ hates in movies, and that's unexplained psychic powers. Uh I didn't bother me at all in this movie i don't know i felt like you were just there and they just it was i accepted it right away i never i didn't and i'm glad that we never got an explanation like i was a little worried because the way they kept showing the apartment buildings and like the building is like a it's a focal point uh throughout the movie but it's also a focal point like on the poster and stuff and i was like oh god are they are they gonna be like this is where the government secret <laughs> facility is. And I was like, oh, please don't. Uh, but I'm proud to say, I'm not proud to say, I'm happy to say that that never happens. Like they, you, you just stick with these kids the whole movie. Yeah. Um, but I loved it. I thought it was great. Uh, I, I really liked it a lot. I thought you might. Um, what it, but, um... uh, should we, I, I, we should talk. Uh, we should also just go ahead and say that I feel like we're going, there's going to be spoilers because I feel like you can't, talk about this movie without spoiling it at right. least a little bit I'll put up would you agree? like a spoiler alert alarm would you agree with that like i feel like we have to like to get yeah. into the, yeah, the nitty-gritty of this movie i thought this movie was so good i would hate to spoil it for somebody um yeah so so pause the show the show is so watch the movie then come back and and listen to us talk about the movie yeah. um i i also like i i can see why this I, I swear I I when I searched this movie initially it was like best movies of 2022. I but, that's so funny you mentioned that I googled the same exact thing and this was at the top of the list. I'm well, maybe pretty sure it was like maybe, 20... maybe it's one of those things that was in production in 2021 yeah, and like a limited you know sometimes sometimes movies have like super limited releases yeah. in a year and they're not like widely available until the following year it might be one of those situations. Yeah, I mean, it's very possible that they couldn't pick up distribution until much later. Um, yeah, that's po- and it's it's foreign too, so you know that's always... yeah, it's Norwegian, and you know their budget versus box office is abysmal. It doesn't track with how good the movie is. The budget for this was roughly three point two million, and yeah. the box office it pulled in two hundred and thirty six thousand. But also, like that—that's also kind of misleading because God only, like, who knows what kind of theatrical release this even had? You know what yeah. I mean? Like, the, they don't, and the box office in like Norway, you know, well, pretty much any other country in the world besides, well, even Japan, but like American box office and Chinese box office are like enormous, and like every other country, 
even ones that that produce a lot of movies their their box offices are way lower okay um, here, here's our answer right here um let me just interject real quick sure. because it was released on video on demand the 18th of october 2022 okay so that's why we probably didn't hear anything about it it was probably released in Norway in 2021 yeah. or, or something like that. Uh, but anyway, let's anyway. get into the, the plot a little bit of this movie. Uh, I feel like we don't have to get into all the nuts and bolts, but it's a pretty simple, It's it, of all things, it's actually kind of a simple story, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you want to you wanna go ahead and, uh, and tell the people uh, what happened in this movie? Sure. So um, you can see behind me, there's two sisters. Um, the one over, nope, over here, uh, I forgot her name, but she has, I forget everybody's name. I was, (laughs) I was, I was hoping you'd remember. I I can never remember anybody's Um, name. Uh, she has, she's on the spectrum, uh, and she can't communicate. Uh, but later in the movie, um, she starts to have these like telekinetic, um, conversations with other kids in the neighborhood. Yeah. Um, and uh, her sister right here, the one that's not on the spectrum, takes her out. Um, to, uh, would you say experiments with her or just kind of like oh. exposes her to uh, other kids? And like, oh, yeah. Well, I think that I think one of the strongest themes in this movie is like this is kind of like um, is evil behavior learned or is it inherent in people like at least that's what i took out of it because she the the non-spectrum sister the very first thing you see in the movie is they're on the car that so so the two sisters and their family they 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 move to this new area and this is like an area i guess that's generally like a vacation area because they describe how like nobody's there because everybody's off on holiday but anyway one of the first things you see is her literally like pinching her to see if it like hurts to see if she can get yeah. a reaction and the the girl um and and yeah i didn't look into this i don't know if the actress that played uh the autistic girl is actually autistic but she did yeah. a great job and i i this is uh this is coming from somebody with uh with a disability but like i whenever you have a, an actor playing somebody with a disability you 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 write you walk a tightrope you know between being respectful and being uh, that that movie with Rosie Perez, where she's <laughs> supposed to have like Down syndrome or something, and she's like, "It's like the boss." You walk a it's... really fine line of offending most but, of the general population. But I thought that this was like really, really well done, and like I I thought, well, first of all, just on Front Street, for a movie that's basically only children actors, all of the actors were great. Like yeah. I thought the acting in this was fantastic. Um, but anyway, getting back to the the overall story. So so the non-spectrum girl, it, it, she's she's kind of a shitty kid a little bit. Like she's you can tell that she's frustrated with her sister because her sister is is a burden to her. And she gets you know, all she the has, attention. She gets all the attention. She's, you know, again, like obviously she has a lot of special needs and and then the um Again, I really wish I remembered anyone's name. So, so <laughs> but, Anna, Anna is the one on the spectrum. Anna, Ida, yeah, and well, Ida, Ida, yep, Ida is yep. the one is the sister, the younger. So sister. Ida, when Ida meets another kid, Ben, who, Ben, yeah, and Ben is like, you know, they're all about the same age, and Ben's like, hey, you want to see something? And Ben basically shows her that he can manipulate things with his mind. And which is a pretty cool scene, actually. Like, mm-hmm. also, uh, during this whole movie, or not, I would say during maybe the first forty-five minutes, I'm like, why is this a horror movie? And then, then it clicks. And you're like, yeah, oh, okay. <laughs> right. uh, which is great, by the way. I love that. Um, are you so, are you referring to the cat murder? Or different... we're going to get into that. That's okay. I hate that part of the movie. Um, <laughs> but uh, anyway, th- I will get right into that right now. So Ben, uh, Ben shows her attention, and Ben also. Like they like each other, you can tell. Like they they hit a friendship off right away. But Ben is kind of shitty. Like Ben, he he wants to play pranks and stuff. Like escalates and eventually Ben they 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 start by don't they just drop like normal shit from like the steps and then yeah. that escalates to dropping a cat. Uh, 
I hate this part. I love cats. I got, and I'll, I'll admit it. Like I'm one of these people, like, I don't want to see a cat murdered on film. I'd rather see people murdered all day long. The cat, like, I know obviously they didn't really hurt the cat, like in real life, but like them holding the cat over the steps, I was really uncomfortable with. And then they, after they dropped the cat, the fucking, the poor cat is like, I don't know how they got survived. But the cat survives and is like limping away. And that was tough to see. And then Ben, and this is when you find out that Ben is, I mean, obviously then you found out, but like Ben is like sadistic and Ida, uh, like she doesn't want anything to do with it. And this starts Ben's descent into being the villain of this movie. Like, uh, I know I already referenced Akira, but another thing that I kind of reminded me of, uh, are you from, I don't know the name of the episode, but there's a very famous Twilight Zone episode, possibly Outer Limits. I don't know, the Simpsons made fun of it, where this whole town is terrified of this little kid because this little kid can do anything with his mind. He's mm-hmm. like a Dr. Manhattan. And the Simpsons made fun of it with Bart, because remember, like, don't don't let him read your thoughts. And yeah. then he turns Homer into a jack in a box. That's yeah. based off that Twilight Zone episode. It kind of reminded me of that because this kid, Ben, is troubled and he's also like crazy powerful. Yeah. And that's kind of the, the other. What's the, the the third, the other girl that comes into play? Oh, um, that was Aisha. Aisha? Aisha. Yep. Uh, Aisha also befriends uh, the two sisters and she explains that she also has different psychic abilities. She can like kind of project her thoughts i don't know how to describe it like she's sort of telekinetic she's she's like a medium i think would be the yeah, a medium would be a better way to describe it yeah but she can't manipulate things like ben can um and she also she can hear she hears thoughts uh and she can communicate she she can understand um the autism the autism sister which yeah. is really cool and like I I thought that aspect of the movie was really cool too and also like kind of like like re- not even kind of it's like really sad right like because the movie is saying like the autistic girl it like is completely cognizant of what's going on you know what I mean she's got this wall that she can't get through because of her disability and I don't know I thought that was like yeah really hard like that's a really tough beat like and and I'm sure you know I I don't I don't know enough about um people that severe on the spectrum but like i'm sure there's truth to that and that's like really heartbreaking yeah um but but anyway uh getting back to the overall plot of the movie so anyway you have these kids they all have various levels of psychic ability uh again never explained why which yeah chef's kiss it's better don't off explain that way shit. it would have don't it explain it. muddled up the movie don't Didn't explain you. anything yeah. uh Ben, again, who is shown to be sadistic, uh, he gets worse and worse and eventually kills his mother, which is like fucking brutal. Like that scene, like yeah. where he, like he it, it's weird because he seemingly at first he kind of does it like I don't feel like he did it on purpose or like he he's like what a kid does. Right. Like he's the, he he's on the scene and he's looking through like a piece of bread or something. And he like I think at first he like shit. He moves up pot of boiling water and then the mom starts yelling and then he like he's still looking through like there's like this barrier between him and reality he's looking through this bread or whatever it is and then a pot hits his mom in the head and it's like he's you know what i mean he's like poking something with a stick and then seeing if it reacts but then it like gets too real and he doesn't stop like that's really good stuff like that is that is what a child like with uncontrollable power would be like. And then later on, I'm kind of jumping around later on. There's a really good scene where Ben, after doing all this again, after killing his mother and literally like the mom is just like fucking dead in the apartment for days, presumably uh, Ben like breaks down and starts crying for his mom, which is like a really powerful, like that's good. You know what I mean? Like, at that point in the movie, it'd be much easier to just make Ben this mustache twirling villain. But like he's still like he seems like a kid that's just made a lot of fucking mistakes. I mean, he is, you know, at the end of the movie, he's still the bad guy in the movie. But I like how he's he's definitely more layered. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, he, I feel like in a, if they ever remade this in America, 
Ben would be way first of all, the kids would be much older. That'd be the first thing they'd change. And second, Ben would be like, you know, uh, he'd have, you know, he'd turn into Peter Parker from Spider-Man 3. He'd have like black hair and <laughs> slick it back and goth makeup and shit. Um I, I also like how, you know, relationships, no matter how old you are or who you are, it's not black or white. You know, right. so in yeah. this movie, um, Ida and Ben go in and out of friendship yes. and, you know, they meet up at different points. And maybe at one point they like really want to play with each other because they're just bored and they're kids. Yeah. Even though that she knows that he's potentially up to no good, she's still a kid and he's right. still a kid. Right. And they kind of, um, uh, you know, drive that home throughout the entire movie, like remember these are still kids and they're still innocents right um so you know they're they're gonna go back and forth between yeah. spectrums and um there was that one scene where ben told ida hey listen i can control you if i wanted to and yeah. that's when i was like oh no what is gonna happen yeah it's like i'd really grown to like Ida's character right. and she's like no you know she's like daring him like no you can't you can't do anything to me and he's like watch and then he like made her, I forgot, like pick up a stick or. Hold yeah, something. but this scene is really brilliant because it does a little it it uh, it, it sets the, the ground for a very good piece of reincorporation later. Uh, yeah. So you don't see any all you see in this scene when he does take her over and it's only briefly. You only see it from Ben's point of view. And it, you said it. She picks up a stake or she picks she, a stake. She picks up a <laughs> stick. She picks up a stick and then again to, to us, we just see a stick and she goes, did you make, did you make that a snake? And he's like, yeah, I did. She's like, he's like, are you scared of snakes? She's like, I'm terrified of snakes. But then later on in the movie, when he takes her over again, after she tries to kill him, there's snakes everywhere. And it's like that. Yeah. Like, good job. Like that's fucking brilliant. You right. set it up. Like, I mean, it's, it, 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 it's just so nice like it's so nice to see such a confidently made movie like there's so yeah. many little things in this movie that's done right like something we haven't mentioned that i i think needs needs to be stated is the overall tone and atmosphere of this movie this movie is just dripping with atmosphere yeah. like seemingly there's not a lot of action in this movie but i don't know about you but i was glued like i yeah. oh, i absolutely. i was like transfixed on this movie like it it's not, and, and it's not necessarily like at a blistering pace. It's kind of slow. It's a little bit of a slow burn movie, but like I could, I, I was just, I was glued as to what was going to happen like the, through the whole movie. And I, I think a lot of that has to do with, again, incredible performances, a uh, really good direction. And just like overall, like I think everything about this movie was just done really well with a lot of care given to it. You know what I mean? Like I yeah. really, uh, really good. And it, uh, there are subtitles, so you do have to pay attention. <laughs> you you have yeah, to read yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I I really like the um, the the mix between the practical effects and the CGI. The CGI was like really subtle. Like when he turned when Ben turned the stick into a snake, that that was creepy as hell. And like you said, probably due to like, excuse me, like we were talking about before. A lot of that's probably due to a monetary constraint. So yeah. it's one of those situations where like the original Jaws, right? Like the best part of that movie is you barely see the shark. Well, that came from a, a technical problem that they had. Like they probably didn't have a ton of money to do a lot of CGI. So they had to do everything practical and it looked great. Like even the um, the scenes where Ben was in control and they went into kind of, they only did it one, once. The, the only, or no, you saw it twice. But mm -hmm. even when the, the you went into that mode, like where you saw from the perspective of somebody taking over, like it was very subtle. Like it wasn't over the top. It wasn't silly. Like again, I, in my nightmares, I can see an American remake of this where everything is just ramped to 11 and it's like completely over the top and silly. Yeah. And I mean, I don't know, this movie did get a little bit of a buzz, so I would not be surprised to see an American remake, but I don't want to see it. Yeah. Doesn't it make you wonder why movies like this, that we love so much, like don't get, I mean, the, it got great reviews, like yeah. from the, of the people who watched it, but 
there's i don't i have never heard anyone talk about this movie there's i mean it's sad to say but there is a percentage of people that it, they just won't watch foreign movies like yeah. if there's subtitles they're not watching foreign movies like eh, i don't understand it like i love foreign movies and i always yeah. have but i i think a lot of it is um it's something i like to call the sushi problem right when you're a kid when you're a little kid and you don't know shit about fuck you know uh and somebody's like hey you want to try this sushi and you're like oh i heard that's raw fish that's gross because like you don't know anything yeah and you don't try it you don't eat it then when you eat it you're like oh this is this is really good i really like this it's the same thing with like foreign movies it's just like oh i gotta read it i don't want to read like they don't even they don't take that step yeah. be like oh shit like parasites a fucking good movie old boys a really good movie fucking seven samurais a really good movie the innocence is a really good movie like it's just like i don't know it, it, it's it's you, some people can't be reached i don't know it, it's yeah just, if you have it, any apprehension about watching a, a a foreign film or anything subtitled just do yourself a favor and watch this one at least like, yeah, there's you, really you not that just... much i mean it's not like there's it's the dialogue is pretty sparse in this movie like it's yeah. pretty i mean I, this is almost a movie that's directed so well you kind of understand what's happening without reading anything to be perfectly honest again i think that's a, a testament to the acting and the direction but i feel like this movie is definitely a show don't tell type movie and i think a lot of the expressions and a lot of the emotion is conveyed just through the acting and the direction like so well like i I think that's this again the strongest uh, point of this movie is that everything is just done so well that I think that it care it, every everything lifts everything else up like not that the 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 script is bad but like it's you know it's not like the, the there's no like long like monologues or anything like that or or you know memorable lines but it's just so well done like I don't know and again to to put all this on children's shoulders is that much more impressive because you know usually what's the old like it's like a george burns line you never want to work with fucking animals or children mm, like yeah. both are terrible in movies and it's like yeah <laughs> um but when you have a small budget you can pay them less yeah yeah <laughs> uh, and they also probably don't have That's the same probably, labor they, they probably yeah. don't have the same labor laws in oh, Norway yeah. that we do here that's why you have to have like twins in a lot of uh, american productions because they can work longer hours. Yeah. I mean, that's legit why. It's yeah. like the Olsen twins. Yeah, perfect yeah. example. It's, it's very gross. It's like, well, we got we need two babies so we can <laughs> we can work each of these babies five hours a day. <laughs> so I just work. looked up um Anna, the the uh woman yeah. is Anna. She is not autistic. Uh so I can we jump into that again really yeah. quick? Because sure, of course. I'm just I always cringe a little bit when I see or hear about someone portraying somebody with a disability, especially now yeah. it's just like, just should, probably should not be done, you know, for your own career too. Like you don't, you don't want to walk that, that type. Yeah. Of, um, I agree. Yeah. I was convinced watching this that she in fact had was on the spectrum. Well, like I said, I mean, I don't think that this is very respectful. I don't think that I don't think yeah. you can watch this movie and they're not they're not making fun of the character. It's, if anything, the yeah. it's like it's like I said earlier, they make this character incredibly sympathetic. And ultimately, she's the hero of the story. So I you want to go ahead and like talk about like what how yeah. how she kind of folds into this movie? Um, yeah, you, you find. Well, again, like the, Aisha Aisha, um, you know, she can communicate to her uh, through her th thoughts. And then you find out, I forget exactly what happened. I think uh, Ben tries to bully Aisha. I think that's what happens. Yeah. And uh, she stands up to him and you find out that that she has like, she is is like, uh, it's like a Dragon Ball Z fight. Like her power levels <laughs> are rival. She's the rival, queen bee. Yeah. Rival Ben's power levels. And it's really interesting. And what happens is uh, Ben, again, Ben just gets more and more deranged. Um, and uh, basically uh, he, he start he kills Aisha uh, through her mother. Cause again, he can, he can control people. And then basically um, they're the, the other sister, again, I'm terrible with names. Uh, Ida. Ida. Ida 
feels like she had also another great scene because Ida is conflicted. She doesn't know what to do. And she, she talks to her mom and she's <laughs> like, what do I, what do, what do you do if a person's bad? And she's like, well, I'd tell an adult. And she's like, well, what if, what if uh, you are an adult? What would you do? And she's like, well, I guess you have to take care of it yourself, which is unwittingly really horrible advice <laughs> uh, because Ada uh, tries to trick Ben and literally push him off a bridge to kill him. Uh, and she fails. So once she fails, uh, Ben tries to kill her. Uh, but then after she fails, she Ida's like, well, Ben's going to try to kill me and my, well, probably my sister first and then me. Um, so that leads to this whole uh, Mishigash where it turns into this like, oh, also it's, it, I, I assume, I don't know, Chris, did you, did you feel this, that Ida also has psychic powers? Like the scene where she like, she like focuses real hard and breaks her cast. Like I thought that was trying to apply. Oh yeah. He has some Just, sort of latent abilities. Yeah. It not strong. Um, right. And not like it, it, not strong enough to do anything that well, could possibly right, change the rival, of her future. Yeah. Right. Or rival ben. But, but also, well, I'll get to it in a second, but also I think what the movie is trying to say that all children have some sort of level of innate psychic powers because at the end of the movie, so basically what happens is uh there is like a psychic showdown between Ben and <laughs> Ben and uh Aunt Anna. That's her name, right? Look, yeah. I remember her name. Yeah. There is literally a psychic showdown between Ben and Anna uh in like a playground. And it's there's very other intense. children running around. It's wild. Well, there's other children running around, but the other thing is is that there's all these children like looking on and in the in there they literally focus on all the children around and all the children in the apartment buildings like looking down and the way i took it was is that they all like again to use a dragon ball z reference uh anna made like a spirit bomb from because uh, chris i don't know how familiar you are with dragon ball z but there is a I, I, yeah. a, a move that goku does where he he calls all of the energy of the world together to, th yeah. to make this big explosion and he throws it down on his bad guys. That's what this reminded me of. Like, because mm -hmm. they show all the kids, all the kids are reacting to this. And then uh, Anna gets enough power to kill Ben. Uh, and this scene's great. I thought this scene was fantastic. Um, I, I just, and that's kind of the movie. But also, let me ask you a question because we are running out of time. How did you, how did you read the end of this movie? Because I felt like I felt like they were trying to hint that there was something more to to Anna, and I didn't really understand what they were going for. Um, so I'll be quite honest; I wasn't really thrilled with the ending, um, and I, I was kind of hoping for more. Like you, you nailed it when you said it was like a psychic showdown. Yeah, they were yeah. there was they were like across a pond. And you could see like the waves in the the pond yeah. uh, moving, and you know the earth shaking a little bit. And then uh, we already said we're doing spoilers. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, we've been spoiling the movie the whole yeah. time. Yeah, <laughs> uh, they 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 uh, these two Anna and Anita like use their powers together and kill Ben. Um, yeah. Uh, how he's killed? Like, maybe they give him a heart attack. Maybe they. I I assume they, that's what it was because yeah. like earlier in the movie, Ben. It's shown that Ben. Remember, Ben like was like seizing up uh, Aisha's like something in her chest. I it yeah. could have been her lungs. It could have been her heart. But I, it's something. I assumed it was something to that effect. And then it was just over, and I was wondering, okay, what's? I I assume there was like. Uh, so something else was going to happen like yeah how could it possibly end right there um because i i, I wanted some kind of follow-up with anna like it seemed like okay yeah. you just you just killed someone you killed another kid like you know that you did this you know you needed to do it to like right. save yourself and save your sister but then what happens like <laughs> well it, that's the thing and it the movie ends with Ida and Anna sitting in a room and Anna throughout the movie she she likes to make noise and she has this like erasable like I don't even know what you call it it's like a drawing pad but it's like a magnetic drawing pad yeah, so every time you move those, sort of it's thing. like an etch a sketch yeah but she's just she, it's seemingly at least the way I took it is she, like because during the course of the movie Anna 
becomes more vocal and she um she's she's a little bit more you know she she's not she's not as is nonverbal and she's not she's a little bit more empowered uh, yeah. for lack of a better term over her body and but it seems like at the end of the movie that she's kind of reverted back to the way she was in the beginning but the the thing is so so the movie ends literally with Anna and Ida and Anna's got her etch a sketch thing and she's just making just noise and circles but then the movie ends with her erasing it and then holding the pencil really firmly and then it cuts to black and i'm like i don't i don't know I don't what you're trying it. to tell yeah i don't understand what you're trying to tell me here i don't know what that was yeah i haven't looked into it further i haven't seen anybody else's analysis i feel like there's something i'm missing at the end and um but have but having said that i it's still a very strong uh movie for me and, and but the, yeah the ending is a little disappointing the unfortunate part about Aisha dying, other than then she was a great character and like a sweet, really sweet girl in this film. It, it was is, so sad when she died. Yeah. She was the one that would help Anna speak. So uh, telepathically, she would like kind of she would give Anna the words to say. Well, at first I was uh, I I thought maybe and I, this wasn't right. I was incorrect. I thought maybe that Anna never was speaking and it was always Aisha. But that's not that the movie does not lead you in that direction. You know what I mean? I thought maybe yeah. that Aisha was kind of puppeting her, but no, that's not the way it was. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, we only got two minutes. So, so what do you want to, what do you give it TJ? Oh, this is a nine. This is a nine all day long. It, yeah. Almost a 10. I feel like I said, the ending is a little weak. Uh, maybe upon reviewing or maybe upon somebody smarter than me telling me what that's supposed to mean, maybe it would bump it up to a 10. But either way, it's very strong. It's a high recommend for me. It's a, it's definitely nine. It's a great movie. Yeah, Big fan. How uh, about you? Nine one, nine point one. Yeah, uh, that same. that ending is a little weak. The ending yeah. is a little weak. I I I was uh, like watching it in bed, and I'm just like looking around the room to ask somebody what the hell just happened. <laughs> I was the only one in the room. And yeah. I'm like, I guess there's zero explanation given. Like, okay, I guess I just have to be. It's just one of those things. Satisfied where I feel, with what I'm given. I feel like that's supposed to mean something, and I don't know what that's supposed to mean. Yeah, you know well, what? That... I'm gonna reach out to the director. We're gonna get him on this podcast. Just send him an email. Just, yeah, just... shoot him an. I'm sure it's right out. Uh, what, what's his name? Uh, it's something very Scandinavian. <laughs> I don't. I can't even pronounce it. I'm gonna find uh... it, and uh. Is it at Norway.com? Yeah, at, at Norway.no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, his All name right. is, is oh, es Eskil Eskil Volk. The Eskil Volk. Okay. He's great, by the way. I don't know yeah. if he's made any other movies, but this movie I rocked. In and now I need to watch. Uh, oh, he made The Worst Person in the World. I heard about that. That's supposed to be really good. Um, all right, let's say goodbye. We and got less than a, made a movie called Thelma that I heard of that I have to watch. Anyway, that's uh, I, we don't know what we're gonna watch next week, do we? Nope, we'll text each other. Uh, all right, we'll figure it out. All right, everybody, thanks for listening and uh, keep uh, keep on keeping on. <laughs> <Yeah, I don't... laughs> See what TJ said, <laughs> yeah, keep, keep on consensually, obviously, no, obviously, obviously. <laughs> all right, later, all right. Bye. bye bye. Yeah. <laughs>